Now this question, as far as geometry goes, is pretty easy. It, it's some pretty basic shapes here. We've got a square, we know the area of the square, so we can probably work it backwards and, and, and pretty quickly see, hopefully just even in our heads, that answer A is the is the answer, okay? That's the, the length of one side of the square. If we want, we can draw a square, but the, the reason I'm kind of prolonging this explanation is just to teach you something you might not know yet, uh, every SAT math question gives you access to this geometry reference chart. It's in the top right corner of the Blue Book app. Basically, just click it and you get all these geometry formulas. So, in this case, I, I would hope you know that the area of a square and the area of a rectangle are just length times width, right? That's a simple formula. We probably use that on a day to day basis, even just the kind of geometry you do in your daily life. But um, it's a good one to know. And if you don't know it, it is there in the reference chart, along with some of the more complicated ones that you probably don't have memorized, like cylinders and spheres. They're all there. So there's no reason to get uh, geometry questions wrong purely from a memorization standpoint. Most of the things that you need to know are given. So we could just say, okay, if the area is 64 and the length and the width are the same because it's a square, 64 is x squared. And then how do we solve that with algebra? Well, we could just take the square root of both sides. And hopefully by now you do know that 64 is a perfect square. So the square root of 64, you should be able to do instantly. It is eight. You can plug it into a calculator that you've brought. You can plug it into the Desmos calculator if you need to, or we could just guess and check, right? Because there's only four answers here. So just do, okay, if, if eight were X, then eight times eight is 64. And that's what I wanted. So I'm done, right? So we have a lot of options here. I know it's an easy question, but I'm using it as a way to teach you things that will come in handy when the questions aren't so easy. So try to think about strategies, even where you don't need them. And that way, when you get, when you really do need them, they're ready to go and you've, you've strengthened that muscle so that you can use the, that strategy more easily.